have zeal for something. Right. In fact, if you've lived any length of time, people say, oh, they really like this, or they really like that. Some have a zeal for pleasure. Some have a lot of zeal for work. Some have a zeal for money. Some have a zeal for comfort. But tonight, I'm not, I'm not trying to mix message. I'm not trying to be slick or anything like that. Oh, but there will be those with an undeniable honest true zeal for the Lord. Yeah. Mm, I did not get the response I expected. Oh, that's someone who would really decide in their heart and their mind that, you know, I am just tired of all my effort, my energy, Amen. my resources Amen. going to the things that will not return to me, that will not bless Amen. the Lord, it will not exalt God, that there would be a zeal, Amen. a revival, a zeal that takes place in the heart of the people of God. Amen. The Bible's clear, and it does warn us, or warn that in the last days, in the end times, not the world, but that the church people right. would struggle. Church people, look around, us would struggle. Yeah. That Christianity would be tainted and diluted, that God would be brought down to a level of worship to that of things and habits and hobbies and pastimes and just be something else to be involved with. In fact, Paul told Timothy, said in Timothy chapter 3, this know also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, yeah. covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth makers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, any high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Come on. Yes. We're talking about church folks. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. How do you know where your love meter is at? Come on, Pastor. Come on. It's easy to draw nigh and say with your mouth, but if we were to take a stock and stewardship of our time, our energy, our resources, our words, our thoughts, and our deeds, Come on. where would it really land? Are we really in love or we have simply just slipped into like with God? It's no coincidence that Satan would send someone to talk to you out of your level of commitment that the Lord asked for. Come on. Yeah. When you start to live for God, you want to get into church, you want to get into especially an apostolic truth preaching church like this yeah. that, that, that looks for you to go to your maximums and not minimums. Yeah. That he'll yeah. send somebody just like he did in the garden to say, yeah. Hath God said, right. do you really, do you really have to get baptized in Jesus' name? Do you really have to live holy? Will you really speak with tongues? Yeah. I tell you right now, anybody that talks like that, that says things like that, they don't know Jesus like I know That's Jesus. Right. And I'll tell you this, I doubt that their relationships are much better. Because if they could take God to that level, where will they take you? Yeah. Can you imagine someone going to your spouse and telling them, you ain't really got a lover like that. You don't really have to be that kind of a husband or that kind of a wife. You don't have to be all in. You don't, you don't have to turn around and make the dishes he likes. Go ahead and make what he doesn't like to put him in his place. Are you here? We live in a world that talks like that about God. Right. The Bible's clear about people being zealous right. and people being lukewarm. Yeah. And yet we live like it's not in there. We talk like it's not in there. We act like it's not in there. Right. Today's charismatic Christianity, they want his heaven but not his ways. They want blessings but not sacrifice. They want a crossless Christ. A bloodless altar. They only want the part of God that benefits them and not costs. They want a faithful God, but they don't want personal faithfulness to God. 
They want to come and go as they please without God. What's your will today? In our text, David was king of Israel. Now, you have to understand, he had a great zeal to exterminate the wicked house of Ahab because this is Jehu that got anointed by the Elijah that called fire down from heaven and thought his ministry was over and found himself ready to give up in the Lord. What doest thou here? And he had some things still to do. And I don't know what happened to him in there, but I think he got a wake-up call and realized who he was and then that anointing was a for Ahab. There was a transference. There was something that happened. I'm going to tell you something. Get around people that are all in for a talk. You can see it. You can feel it. You can take it. I don't want to hang around with someone. That question's gone all the way. That question's just broken. Can I tell you what? He's gone with a mother and I'll get it. He's gone with a mother and I'll get it. He's gone with his gifts.
you better hold on to what you got and never let no one come between it because it's going to take some effort to restore. I see it every day. I see it all the time. The most powerful saints of God. Oh, that their pride gets in the way. They will and will never get to that place again of lifting up their hands and being thankful and running to an altar and gripping it with thankfulness because, well, I don't want anybody to know I've slipped. How you live and who's influencing your life, who you're talking to and who you're believing matters. It'll affect your whole life. Proverbs tells us on a grand scale, it says in, in 14 verses 34 and 35, righteousness exalteth a nation. Look, if it'll do it to a nation, what will it do for your life? But sin is a reproach to any people. What will sin do to your life? What, what will ungodliness do? What will half-heartedness? What will, what will uh, uh, just, you know, kind of a half-committed mentality do? The king's favor is towards the wise servant. Yes. But his wrath. But his wrath. Oh, we, we don't like to talk about things like that. But his wrath. What is his wrath? Is against him that causes shame. You're known as a man or lady of God. You're known for something. And the next time they see you, you're sitting doing nothing. And now you got negatives to things to say about the church folks, about the pastor, about the church. You're complaining about the color of the carpet. You're complaining about the songs. And if the pastor would do it, and you got that. Oh, how the mighty have fallen in there. Come on now. Come on now. And so the reason for his zeal, our, our church needs a zeal. So no more yes, people yes. have. Have, have, by their worldliness, have lost their seed. You, you lost that drive that you once had. You, you've kind of lost touch with that 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 that, that fire that's taken. You don't invite people anymore. You're not vibrant. You're feeling towards God, and your Christianity is just kind of something you put on like a reluctant coat in the morning. You're a Christian or a church. Yeah, 
restlessness and that desire that you can fumble the music and you're still shouting. You can fumble yes. something in the preaching and they're still working. All, right. all those people that still come in with a pep in their step after a long, hard day of work. Don't they all stray? Don't they all struggle? Don't they all find rest? You got to set the door to realize this is the rest. Where will the wheel be set? You got all time for this. It's still good enough for me. Revival is a restoration and renewal. It's a restart. It's a starting over and returning to that experience that you once had with God. I'm so thankful that I, I can see the, the land and fall of my own life living for God. Yeah. Times when I did entertain that person that was negative, that person that told me, don't give that much, that person, you don't got to do that around those. Uh, and I'm so thankful that I, 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 I return to that place and, and get in the presence of God and there's nothing I don't want to yes, ask you about. Know. There's nothing I wouldn't get. Yes, I want yes. God more than my neighbor. Yes. 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 I say, I might get it, but it's sad to me when I see people week after week, month after month, and year after year, you never get excited about God. But you find out their next toy, their next trip, their next whatever, new job. Oh, and they're beside themselves. And in the end, they're in and out of the presence of God. You see, we all need a restart. Amen. Thank God for church a couple of times a week. Yes. Yes. Right yes. y'all don't do it, but I tell you what, it's a couple times a week. I need to restart. Yeah. In fact, I don't want to hurt y'all's feelings, but every Monday, every morning, I need to restart. Bob says, "Let not the sun go down upon your wrath." You know, I don't want the sun to go down upon my sin, upon my anger, upon my sex. I want to so that I can get up the next day without having to repent, so I can be for God what I need in heaven. Amen. 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 Because you can't live in the past. That's right. Amen. Hey, hey, fellas. Hey, husbands. If your wife struggled with something in the past, it's your fault. Where's your faith in God to lead her out of that? Come on, amen. Where's your faith in God? Where's your zeal for God? That's bigger than that problem. Is? If she's the weak of best one, you're the one that does all the heavy work. Why aren't you doing the spiritual heavy work? Oh, wait a minute. Let me talk about that just for a minute. Oh, you're a big shot when it does all this other stuff. But you're the last one in the altar. You're the first one to complain about God. You'll promote songs of the world, but not the song of the redeemed. Your wife ought to see you in prayer. Your wife ought to see you at the okay. altar. Yeah. You, want, you want ladies in prayer. You want ladies in. You want your wife in your God. Let you go first, sir. Hello. Hello. Well, let me say this, ladies. I'm not getting in trouble. See, because we don't like to put people in their place. That's a bad word. But let me ask you, there's a bump in the night and a strange voice at the door. Who's going to go?
can't thrive on the previous blessings and spiritual nourishment. We need a revival. Yes, sir. We need a revival. Yes. Biblically, we need a revival. Amen. We need an all out revival. We need to get on fire yes. and sell it for revival. I need to get on fire. I need to get excited. I need to stir up that gift. I need to get back to where I need to be. Yes. Tucked away inside our body was a story of an individual that made up his mind to have a and the result of his determination is so powerful to speak to every one of us. What, what would happen in our lives if we decided that I'm not going to let life and the distractions of this world to define my future? Come on. Are you hearing me? Come on, amen. What if I decided, you know what? I want God to choose my destiny. Yeah, all right. Oh, some of you spend so much time on making sure you're going to leave this, you're going to do that, you're going to make sure. You can't do a better job than God, so why don't you hand it to Him? Hello. Hello. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello. My existence in life will not be measured by physical means. Yeah. If you can measure it, it'll be lost. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to measure my physical things or my own peers. I want my life to measure it to only be calculated by my Heavenly Father and my spiritual pursuits. Amen. Amen. It was Jay who decided. Yes. Jay who decided after all the mess that he dealt with, after all the mess that he saw and had to live with, with Jezebel and Ahab and all the mess, he decided, I, I'm jealous for God and I'm going to have a Bible. Yeah. Yeah. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of sin, in the midst of evil, a man stood up and said, I'm going to have a Bible. Yeah. All you guys talking out saying, well, if I knew this and if I knew what would happen if you just, it don't matter. saluted him and said to him, and I'm telling you what, the enemy does not want me preaching this. Come on now, Pastor. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm getting all the corn. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus I need to quit sweating on this one. I need to quit doing it. <laughs> and he said to him, is thy heart right? As my heart is right with thy heart. And Jehovah dad answered, it is. If it be, give me, if it be, if it be, give me thy kingdom. Mm -hmm. Give that means something. We'll get to that. Don't need to mark that down. And he gave him his hand and he took him up into the chariot. Yeah. See what he dealt with first? Yes. His heart. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. I'll just be honest with the pastor. Just pastor, Sister Crow. We, <laughs> we, we talk about it. You'll get that one right. I like that. not a struggle to get people to do things. It's not a struggle to get people to church when their hearts are right. Right, right. The first thing you need to know, the struggle you have in living for God isn't the evil. No. It's That's your right. heart. There you go. The struggle in your relationship is your heart. That's right. It's always your heart and what you're putting first. He said, my heart's right, it is. Then he said, come with me. See my zeal for the Lord. See it. Go see it. Is your heart right? Come with me. Go with me and see my zeal. So I'm going to tell you, the first indictment is when you say, hey, I did this back then. Say it right now. You say, Come with me right now. Yeah. I'm going to have a Bible right now. Right now. Yeah. In the midst of evil, yeah. in the midst of struggle, in all oh, hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Ahab was an evil king, and he was on the throne of Israel. Right. Evil was allowed to run rampant, kind of sounds like today. It wasn't the fact that there wasn't any righteousness. But it was the fact that righteousness had been overruled. Evil was ruling the land. Mm. It's not the fact that righteousness has been overruled in your home. You're just letting evil rule it. It's 
not that righteousness has left you, it's just Hello. all that evil and worldliness rule. Hello. Hello. It's not that God's not moving in your life, it's that you're letting distractions there is. and worldliness there is. rule. Yes. Some of us act like you're waiting on God. You can pray that you're waiting on God. Yes. It's, it's up to him to do so. It's up to him to move. You and the fact that God's like, I can't if you can rulership in your life. You can't be saved from sitting on the throne until you remove the evil king and let the king of kings come back on the throne. So you can do it. Quit blaming it on God and look at yourself in the mirror and it's going to hold the Trinity to be myself and I and get yourself right with God and say, oh, i got to seek the righteousness of God and get zealous again. You gotta understand that we as a church cannot allow that same evil that seems to be on the throne right now. That perverseness in society to go unchecked. We gotta make sure that's why we gotta be in church every time the doors are open. That's, right. that's why you gotta live godly, soberly, and righteous in this present day, right, right. now. Yeah. Because if you don't, evil will be on the throne. Yeah. Your house isn't struggling. Your grandbabies and children and family and friends aren't struggling. Right. They're letting the wrong thing on the throne. Amen. Right. You can't let the world and what it's doing define your future. Yeah. If you don't take control, you are not being in control. We've got to make up our minds. Come on. Amen. Like Jehu. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to have revival. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm going to have a revival. I'm going to have an intimate relationship with God. Ah, there's nothing more beautiful and nothing more exciting. Brother Bruce, I like it when you get stirred. I know when I get stirred. But the problem is I can't stay stirred. i got to be beyond stirred. I've got to be changed and do different than I've done. That's what we do with the Holy God. You're always going to get what you always got. Don't you get mad at God because your life's dead. What's up, my root spiritually? Amen. Amen. It's a sad day when you oh, I got to go find a message, get a message. You ought to be a burning message walking the talk about because you're on fire for the things of God and you're zealous. Yeah. It's a shame we know everything about all these other things we like, but it comes down to God. Like, oh, I really don't know what he's doing. how powerful revival really is. Come on, Pastor. In the next verse, it tells how powerful it really is when you seek to please God. Can, can, I, can I help some of you? Yeah, go ahead. Lacey, when, when you, you don't let anybody outside you influence you, but you seek to please God. That's right. Yeah. You're going to know this is the right place. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they won't talk about it. You, know, you go to any other place or any other doctor, they, the first thing they want to do is, you know what, you don't need the Holy Ghost. You want to be right. Paul right. said, I'm glad I speak with tongues more than you. <laughs> so where's that going to leave you folks that don't do it at all? Yeah. And some sort of sign for them is like, ooh, come on, preach it, okay. man. I tell you what, I'll tell you the first thing. If you know someone that's telling you, give me your last name, you read the whole Bible, and don't have none of you can even call the Lord Lord unless the Bible Holy Ghost, you better be careful who you let whisper in your ear. That's it. Amen. Hey, yeah, Denise, you and I, we don't get grandfathered in just because we've been around a little while. Hello? Hello? I mean, can I say this? Can, can, I, can I interject this right here? Look, if Adam and Eve walked and talked with the Lord, what on earth are you going to let the Satan talk to you in the first place? Come on, man. If you got it that good in God, why are you listening to that garbage? Why would you? Oh, they, I guess they didn't quite have it like they thought they did. Can I give you time? Can I tell you all Look, ain't none of us got it quite like we, we think we do. That's right. And that's why we still have altars in the, in, in the church. Absolutely. That's why we still got access to repentance. That's that's so I'm going to wait, oh man, I kind of biffed out on that. I'm going to get my zeal back. Yeah. Oh, man, right? Hey, come and see. My zeal for God. I got a mistake there. Evil's predominant there. But I got seven for God. And look at you right now. Yeah. 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 I'm going to deal with some things that kind of got a foothold in my life that I never said. I know they're not said, but they're ways and distractions that I've never lived up to the potential God placed on me. 
myself of these things. I want to get that out of my life and get that out of my life. I want to get rid of all the evil and the waste out of my heart. First, you can't deal or confront evil in the land. You can't talk about being sold out for Jesus on, while you're still bought out by the things in this world. Come on, yeah. You can talk a good talk, but you'll never walk one. Come Here's on, what the Lord said. He said in chapter 2, verse 30, And the Lord said unto David, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes. See, see, when the Lord did something, and he spoke the world, he always said, It is good. Yes. It's what he did. It's good. See, we want to go do what we want to say. God said it's good. Say it's good. We don't work that way. We want, oh, like a little koala follows us around, brother Jonathan. Bark and tell me it's good, little Jesus. I'm a big shot. Jesus don't prove what I do because I'm special. children yeah. and your grandchildren and turn this church upside down yeah. to the things of God because I don't want any of us losing out. How do we lose when we're walking with the king of kings and the Lord? We've got to get us back on the throne. Listen, God has done well. That which is right in my eyes. That has done under the house of Ahab according to the wall that was in my heart. Go find this verse so you don't think I'm just trying to bud this over little bit. Because what Ahab did affected his children. Yes, it did. Right. It affected his whole thing. Don't, don't think you can just do whatever you want. Right. And you got your own little opinions and ideas that don't measure up to the word of God. But it sounds good to the worldly lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I don't know where you're going to find that meter is. But if you want this, you better leave no doubt. Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Zeal is going to affect four generations. Oh, yes. so you were so worried about your babies, and you ought to be in this dark world. You ought to be worried, but we take what comes all that. Your zeal for God. You're so busy wanting to hand off junk instead of handing off a legacy of letting God lead you into His righteousness. There ought to be something that comes over every say of God here.
the Bible will have preeminence. What God says is more important than what I think. What God does and is doing is more important than anything that I can occupy my time with. Some of us need to revival our lives.
see it. Not the night. <laughs> because we're all in trouble because Jesus said, if you think it in your heart, you're done. Let's, 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 let's get off this territory right now and get back down to the revival. Are you hearing know what I'm saying? How many remembers the altercation that Jesus had with the crowd, the folks? The man with the withered hand I touched on this week. Remember what he said? David said, give me thine hand. Is your heart right? Give me your hand. Oh, in Jesus' name. How you walk together except in Jesus' name. Jesus said to this man, he had a good hand and a bad hand. Some of us have all been dealt with hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Back in those days, extending of a hand was an agreement. It was binding. It was a contract. It was a supreme act of faith. Jesus even talked about it. And he said, when God says he's healed, Jesus said it, and no man had to put his hand to the plow. And looking back, it's just. Come on now. Come on now. Hey, man. Come on now. You backed up on God? still reaching for a closer yeah. walk yeah. with yeah. Yeah. A closer walk with a closer yeah. how dare I ever get to the place. Uh, oh, let me talk to some elderly men around here. Oh, we ever get to the place that we think we got it sold up. We are, we're telling our spouses, I'm as good as God. Yeah. My words are silent as good as God. There ain't no sin in my life. You send a message. I know we like to think that oh, my kids know better than them. I don't believe in that. No, they don't. Won't well, do as I say, not as I do. It's amazing how closely our children follow our footsteps. Oh, God, when we get back to reaching out in prayer, I'm going to be finding myself yeah. in running to an altar yeah. and leaving a claw marks on because I'm trying yeah. to get myself oh, set there yeah. and finding that place I'm walking in. Oh, you're a nice 
pressure. Oh, you did well at finances. You did good. You came out of nowhere and ascended high. You did. Come on, Pastor. But what is that measure to salvation? What is that measure against yeah. God? Paul saying, listen, all your trophies, all those accolades and accomplishments that you want your family, friends, church, and neighbors to, 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 to pass on that to Paul. He said, that's done, folks. Hello, it's done. Yeah. Amen. Don't, 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 don't be like, oh, look at the Babylon I have built, so you'll find yourself. Right. Oh, go read that story. Oh, no. oh, that I might have personal revival. Yes. That I get a revival that the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Yes. Oh, that I'd be on fire for God. I need a revival. Like James said, come to go with me. Watch my zeal. I'm going to have revival. All of us are coming to have revival. Oh, I want revival. Yeah. Amen. When Jehu made that statement, he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. What does he say here is, I don't care how evil the world is. Right. I don't care how ungodly it's become. I don't care how distracted the worldly amusements of the heart. I'm going to have revival. Come with me. We're going to have revival. You come with me. We're going to have revival. Yeah. Jesus always said, you better come and follow me. Come and go with me. Jesus said it to every disciple. Come and follow me. Come and go with me. That sound still goes out today from every bona fide church, from every person of God that always delights to declare, come and go with me and see my zeal for God. Yeah. Not my stuff, not my thing, not where I come from, but where I'm going. Oh, love the Lord right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, revive, rekindle, restore a revival in your hearts. This is what the Lord is trying to tell his people. He's extending the hand right now. Come and go. Come and follow me. Hallelujah. 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 In building the New Testament church. Every one of those disciples, Jesus declared, come and go with me. Come and follow me. Come and go with me. Yes. And I'll show you. You know, you cannot be delivered. Come on. You cannot be set free staying where you're at. Amen. 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 You can't get to step B if you won't leave step A. Amen. Amen. You know, you can't steer a parked car. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. You have to make up your mind. Yes, you do. I'm going to have a ride. Yes, sir. I'm going to have a ride. It's time to rise up. To see what God is doing, to be a part of what He is doing. And I want to have revival. I want to be a part of what you're doing, Jesus. You got to let go of your world before you can step into God's world. You got to let go of your world before you're going to step into Him. You can't have His while you're holding so desperately on the earth. You can't have His name while you're gripping in your name. Let me tell you, there are future effects of having revival. There's a time the impact that a revival has that is real. Let me finish this and tell you the rest of the story here, a little portion that happens later. Years after this incident, there's a rumbling sound of, of mighty chariots tearing through the Kidron Valley. Years later, destruction is coming as Nebuchadnezzar was bent on destroying all of Israel. The only hope they had was they fled for their lives. And the only place they could go was So the Lord began to speak to an old prophet by the name of Jeremiah, oh. who had been at the time of Jehu and heard the, heard the fire and the zeal of Jehu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he had been to that revival back in oh. Jehu's day. Oh. Jeremiah had heard him preaching. The Lord said, Jeremiah to Jerusalem, Jeremiah, that weeping prophet 
Don't you go to Jeremiah. Go sit in the gate. Because there's going to be some people coming. There's going to be more coming. Come on. No, 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 no. Not just Israel. Come on. Not just my people. Come on. Not just as this is not just for those back then, but it's for us tonight. That's right. Amen. It's for all those that will come after us, teaching us Amen. what revival can do in your life. Amen. Jeremiah looks at the gate, and here comes a ragtag motley crew looking people through the gate, running. There's no place that, that, that they've been. Jeremiah it says in 35, 5 and 6, the Lord tells him to go. I need you to go do this. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go do this. I want you to go set. I want you to set pots of wine in front of this group of nomad looking folk. These tent dwellers. Let me tell you something. Don't build a building where God says put them. Here's a tent. Remember, we're just passing the group here. Right. I told my wife the other day we could put a down payment on an estate in the Titanic. <laughs> if you buy a house, yeah. you'll put a down payment on an estate of the Titanic. No matter how grand it is, it's all for the sake. Hello. Hello. I don't care what kind of accolades you get as neighbors drive by and say how successful and wonderful you are. Right. You just invested a lot of hard work into something you will lose. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Put it in perspective. Get it all right. I get it. I understand the financial benefits of it, but it's all still a loss because this wolf is you. Mark it down. It's, it's a shame when you lose that mentality and all you think about and talk about is money. You better hear what I'm saying. Come on, preacher. So these people are going to be object lesson. And it says in verse 5 and 6, And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine. And cups, and I said unto them, Drink ye wine. And I told Jeremy, You take these guys, the house of the Lord, put them in a the chain, put them in a the room, and set before them wine. Jeremiah, get it. Can you imagine? Come on, Bev, listen, we're going to have a potluck. Come on, you're the, you're the guest of honor. He laid it all out there. But hear what they said in verse 6. But they said, Go there, look there. 35 and 6. Go to the Bible. You see some familiar names there? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. What did you do with your walk with God right now? Just go to Matthew down the road. That's right, amen. And to your children. Amen. And to your children's yeah. children. And they said, We were drinking a wine for Jonadab. Jonadab, the son of Rahab, our father, yes. commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, neither eat nor your sons forever. Hello? Hello? Oh! Somebody back in that revival that Jehu said is still having revival. Those young men came to revival back in Jehu's day. Come and see my zeal. And it stuck. It stayed. That year later. The one that returned to have revival. That revival moved toward them so much. It transformed him. He developed the conviction in his own life. He had a walk that was so undeniable that years later, his children's children's children were like, we're still doing it like daddy told him. We're still doing it like daddy preached it. We're still living it like daddy. You better start living it, daddy. You better start living it, father. You got grandbabies following. And they can do it just like you. You see, my revival just won't pass away with me. Come on, Pastor. A lot of worldly stuff will. Right, right. A lot of my dumb statements will. Yep. Hello. But if I have a revival, it's gonna be a revival. if I'll be transformed, Come on. oh, just like him, his offspring, Amen. remain dedicated to God. Amen. 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 Can you imagine <laughs> Jay Hussein coming to see me? John that who was at the revival. Hey son. Hey daughter. Listen, we're cool. It doesn't matter who's on the throne. That's right. It doesn't matter what the world's doing. That's right. We're going to have a revival. Amen. Amen. You see, he commanded them 